All right, well, this is Casey. How you doing? And this is Tom, and we can go around the room. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna read off some of the items that I wanna bring. You can to talk to Tom. Okay. Uh, the, the one skylight that's on the roof above the garage has a cracked shell. And does that need to be replaced, or is it just well, sort of- Well, the outer a... shell, it's two shells on it. The outer layer is cracked. Um, so it's something that won't get better with time, so I'll just let you know that it's cracked right now. But I think they can replace the outer shell without having to replace the whole unit itself. If not, you know, it's going to continue to crack and perhaps crack the inner shell. Did you it see any some... water damage? No, then? it's above the garage. Is this something that a handyman can fix? I would probably go with the roofer on that. Roofer. Only because they're gonna, you know, if they, if they do replace the whole thing, then they're going to expose the roof membrane. And at that point, Does it, is it fit it's over natural. like a chimney? Like the one I replaced on my place, there was sort of a chimney that came up from the roof line that was made of wood and then it capped over that. Yeah, that... no, this is not that. Okay. Um, I could not locate your water meter. Okay, so it's, it's gonna be somewhere in the yard, but it could be underneath some of the rock or the gravel. Okay, your water shutoff is located on the west side of the house, you know, right outside the kitchen. I just could not, before I found that, I was looking for your water meter so I can kind of line up where it would be. And I just never found your water meter, okay? Your neighbor's next door is located right in the driveway, but it wasn't underneath that porch. Um, <laughs> so I, it might be in the yard underneath some of that decomposed granite. And that would be where you turn off the, the main water, water to from the, the house? property. Okay. Okay, to the house, you can turn it off here, but if you wanted to turn it off to the whole property, you'd have to go to the meter. Okay, so we can ask the seller. We should ask the seller. Yeah, we should ask where it is or find out if the city can tell us. Yeah, the EDS coming out later. Yeah, we can ask them as yeah, well. Yeah, the first thing you mentioned was that a crack in just the roof? No, the tile, the, or? no, no, no. The skylight. The skylight. Oh, the sky, okay. There's, a, there's like two levels to the skylight, yeah. and the outer so one has a crack in it. Thing. Okay. Uh, the house may have been re plumbed over the years, but, and so we have a hose bib on the east side of the house and a hose bib on the north side of the house that are no, they're, they're inoperative, there's no water flow from them. So they might've been abandoned when they replumbed the house. Okay. And then um, the here, here, let me show you this right here to see if it's still happening. Yeah, so I never got any hot water today and it's got an air code that keeps being displayed. Okay, so sometimes that means that it could be something as simple as the vent not venting properly. It might have an obstruction on the vent pipe. It could be something that that air code, you have to you know Google what that air code meant. Also, see that pump on the floor? What that is is that the overrun of water will fill that up and then it gets pumped out. Okay. And that could also be one of the reasons you'd have an error code, but there's obviously an error code. Of some and then sort. here, the water pipes on, are missing the black foam insulation on the water lines. Would that still be necessary in the heated space? Oh, interesting. In condition and unconditioned. Wow. Um, and then the sediment trap right here on the gas supply pipe is installed in the wrong location. The sediment trap is required to be downstream from the valve as close to the appliance as possible. So this is where they could should have installed it. So wait, downstream from the valve. So it should open and then there should be Correct. the trap. Correct. So in this case though, as it comes through, wouldn't it fall into the trap? I mean, doesn't that pretty much do what you're just talking about? I mean, I know you're talking about code, but yeah. isn't that pretty much well, going to cover? I mean, the thing is, is that usually if this valve is off, then you want that sediment trap on the other side of the valve because in case you open it up, that's where the majority of sediment's going to go into the before you get to the appliance. So you want it to kind of collect before it gets into the appliance. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. that's interesting. It's just what's wrong. <laughs> it, it was done wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, Air conditioner. The air conditioner uh, on the roof is a 2002 uh, model. Okay, and um, and I got verification on this by the way too. So what? Uh, in case you're gonna say what you're about to say, um, <laughs> <laughs> the condensation drain pipe from the air conditioner on the roof is a white PVC plastic pipe. It is required to be copper. It cannot be that white PVC up exposed on the roof. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed it, to be. It can be because it is clearly it is at this supposed, moment. Yeah. It but it's not, not supposed be. to be. Okay, let's let's use the right terminology <laughs> here. The heater that is located on the west side of the house, it's missing one of these sediment traps. It's a 2013 model, so it is required to have a sediment trap. They did not install a sediment trap on that heater outside on the west side of the house. So sediment traps used to not be required. When did that come into play? 2013 is the first time it's mentioned in the code book. Okay, so when they didn't put it in, it doesn't mean it's not just gonna magically stop working, but it should have been there, correct? Correct. Okay. Is this something that we call a plumber and have it? A plumber fixed? would put it back on. Like for instance, 
I, when I put in my hot water heater before I sold my place, I did not put that in and they were like, okay, that's fine. But when I had the furnace done by somebody else, they did put it in. And so you would have a plumber do it and they would put the extension. But up until the point in 2013 where they did that, no one ever had them. And how often would you say there was a big problem with that, Casey? I don't even know why they have them. There we go. So they're not <laughs> super important. All I know is they're but, required to be but there, it's so required. I'm just calling it how it's supposed to be. At some it. point, I don't know someone what the point of had are. a problem. So that's what happened. Um, the flexible gas line like this that goes up to your heater on the roof is connecting inside the heater itself. Okay. Code says that this flexible gas line can never disappear. So it, what should be, it should be a solid steel pipe that's a, coming out of that heater unit and then this flexible line connects to it on the outside of the heater. And this is up on the roof. So your heater that's on the ground right here on the west side of the house is done properly in terms of the flex gas line. It is missing the sediment trap, but the gas line is ran properly. So you have an example of what the one on the roof should look like. Okay. Okay. Run on the roof is a 2002 model. It wasn't required to have the sediment trap. Okay. Okay. The filters that are on the ceiling and in the interior wall are dirty. That's just regular deferred maintenance. Just need, they're disposable type. You throw away, you buy new ones, you put them in. The doorbell did not produce any noise. So I said no sound from the hardwired doorbell. You have a storage closet in the backyard that has a damaged door. Right. Um, on the west side of the house, there is a little cover for the electrical conduit that's missing a screw so the cover is open you have some exposed wire just needs another screw to cover that cover that exposed wire do you know what that is no i don't know where is that one it's on the west side of the house is it towards the back or is it over? no it's right right kind of right by the pool equipment and everything like that oh, right okay. on the west side of the house uh gas meter has some rusted plumbing on it i always put that out in my report because that's a free call to the gas company so when you call the gas company and you establish service in your name and you let them know that They'll come and prime and paint it for you for free. Okay. And he'll have pictures of all this stuff yeah, too. Yeah, you're gonna have color just, just so you know, so that we know where it's located. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the pool filter is leaking slightly from the base of the unit, from the drain plug at the base of the pool filter. And then the structure on the pool has some chipped and stained surface on the plaster there. And um, the, the pool equipment leak is just a, that's it's something a drain you plug, yeah. just have a pool, the pump person check seal. it. Yeah, okay. might need another seal where you cross threaded when you put it back in or something, but it's just, Slight little drip, but it's just something that wasted money. Yeah. Um, there's an outlet on the east wall in the laundry room where the wire uh, cooler is plugged into. It is not grounded. And when it's not grounded, that probably means that the third wire dropped out, or there's only two wires going to that location. Could be. I mean, I don't know. It looks like that might have been all enclosed over there. You know, um, it's not on a block wall, I don't think. So, um, anyway, it's a three prong outlet. You're, you have a 200 amp panel. You have a new upgraded panel over there. Um, but we do have some outlets that are not grounded. Can we go back to the pool real quick? Oh, you're, yeah. the, you're the inspector for the pool, I see. Or is it I am today. I'm not a pool <laughs> I, I inspect pools as part of my ins home inspection. You should go through the list first. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, let's see here. The, and then the dryer van. Let's see if we talked about that. The dryer. Okay. The dryer van pipe is a paper material. It looks like aluminum foil. It should be a metal material. It should be metal flex on. The fireplace. I always put this on my report when it's like this, it's obvious, but, and I know why it's not there, but there's no ember screen or no uh, glass panel door to stop anyone from sticking their arms in there. It's prettier. Yeah, and that's why, it's aesthetic, I understand yeah. that. And then the ga uh, you have a damper that opens and closes to the chimney, and that's not allowed to close all the way because you have a gas pipe that goes into your fireplace. It's always supposed to be open, and they make a little clamp that keeps it from closing, and you're missing that clamp. It's like a C clamp. Costs about five bucks. Yep. And then once we get inside the house, I'm, I'm just in that picker on door stops. Okay? okay, so the bedroom doors don't have door stops. The entry door doesn't have door stops. So anything that can hit on the wall within 90 degrees of the door, I just want it to have a door stop. Okay. Um, master bathroom has a GFCI outlet with the buttons that trip and reset on the wall in the master bathroom. It's not grounded, so it's not going to trip like a GFCI. So that, that well, whenever you say that, that means that we're really saying like an electrician would 
open it up, pull it out, and hopefully just connect a wire. If there's a wire that's there, missing. it needs to be connected to a metal component, on the, and then they can put it back in the box. Okay. It could be something as simple as that. And if it's original wiring, so I there's only two. I know that it would be. It's all been remodeled. It's all new. Okay, vacuum. so you're thinking I can't imagine it being original, but if it is, then you know, I think a contractor overlooked that. Well, what if they put a GFI outlet without grounding the third? Just so it has the appearance of having the required GFCI in the bathroom. Oh. But chances are they put it in it, it either slipped out or that's something That's what I mean, but happened. this one might not have a loose, this one might have a loose wire too because this one in here is, you know, and this is how it was when I got here, it's dead. It's dead and it does not reset. Okay. Okay, so this one I said is, you know, dead. Um, so that's what's going on in that bathroom. So we got a couple electrical things that we just need to be, you know, tidying up with. Okay. Um, because it's been rehabbed, I'm sure it was done right at a certain point, maybe, you know. Um, but, you know, obviously without opening up walls and seeing what's in the boxes, I can't really tell. Dishwasher drain line is missing an air gap, which you normally see on the countertop next to your faucet. Yeah. And if you don't have that air gap, then you need what's called a high loop installation, where they take the drain hose and they kind of mount it higher than the garbage disposal inside the cabinet below the sink. And it's not, it has neither one of those two methods. Does it, so to do the high loop, that's really There's just slack. a hook. Okay, so to fix that, you would put a hook inside the cabinet very high and you would basically wrap the, the tube and hook it on that hook so it goes up high enough. That's what a high loop is. Yeah. It's not it's not super technical, but it's just missing. Yeah. Right, you want that drain hose to be higher than where the garbage disposal is so you don't get no backflow from your garbage disposal clogging it up. Um, also in the kitchen, we have, let's just walk in the kitchen here so we can look at all this stuff right here. That's Mike, he's sitting for us today. John wasn't able to be here today, or Gary wasn't able to be here today. Okay, so first thing I noted here, when you tested the GFCI, it trips, but it's wired to the light fixture. So this light GFCI was sort of circuit should on. only be wired to outlets, not to light fixtures. Okay, here we have an outlet. I call this the south outlet adjacent to the sink on the east wall. It's not grounded, so it's not going to be GFCI protected, which all these need to be. Here, I call this the north outlet on the west wall. Same thing like the hall bathroom. It's dead, does not reset. That's how it was when we got here. I was never had power to even trip it. Here, we have a GFCI outlet that's not grounded, so it's not going to trip. Okay? Just like a fire hazard. No, it's not fire hazard, it's just not grounded. So it's chances grounded. are it's not it's not the wires that fell off. If that's what I think. Or, yeah. Yeah, I probably want to have some. We have good out. here. We have good here. We have good here. And we have good here. You know, this one trips. Yep. You know, and resets. So we have good in the kitchen. So I, I, I'm thinking that if they pull out outlets out of the boxes, there may be some wiring that's not connected in some fashion. Right. And that, that could be the reason why, okay? And then the poor item is um, the, ele uh, the air conditioner on the roof. Inside, there's a disconnect box. There's a little metal box that has fuses that they, an air conditioning guy would pull out so that he could kill the power so he can service it without having to go to your breaker and figure out what breaker runs that, okay? Well, inside that disconnect box, there should be, you know, four wires that have their own little connections and then fuses and then a pull out. Well, I think there was a fire in that little box or something overheated, okay? Because it's really black, it's really melted. Mm. There's no more pull out and, and the wires are hot wired, okay? So there is no fuse disconnect this is the... for that air conditioner on the roof. Okay. Okay. So I put that in pour. I, I believe, I, I, I would want an air conditioner guy just to put a new disconnect box in there. Yeah. Okay, and just, just get rid of that box and put a new box with new pull out and new disconnect in there um, because it's not, it's not functional in its current condition. It's okay. just all, you know, so they just have, instead of having those four wires in their own little connections, they got them all together and bypassing the disconnect. Is it a fire hazard the way it currently is? It could be because of, you know, I didn't really mess around and like undo anything to see how they're hooked up, but just in appearance, it doesn't look good. And it just looks like, I, 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 I mean, it just looks like Jerry Ruth. A little bit. Well, it just, you know, fixed without having to replace it. So, <laughs> so the result, though, is that rather than having a turn off close to the AC, you would have to turn it off at the main box. Yeah, so they would so, have to figure out which one of these breakers in this 200 panel that's not labeled runs that air conditioner up there. So it would take two people, one on the roof, one down here. No, no, yeah, you know. So it's supposed to have like a turn off up there. 
yeah. but they still can turn off down here. So we probably want to get it corrected, but it does have a turn off. It just shouldn't be the way it is at all. No. So that and, would be to work on. And when the electrician is here doing the fixes, have them label the breaker box. So everything is late spelled out for you. Well, I, yeah, that would be, you know, that would be some work because he would have to tone out each circuit. So, I mean, that would be above and beyond any repair, you know, so just be prepared for a labor rate. Yeah. Because you know, it'd be a troubleshooting hours, you know, just to tone out the circuit, figure out which one's chirping, label it, go another trip, tone out the circuit. So it's a lot of time when it comes to uh, labeling a panel. Okay. Since they didn't do it when they rehabbed it. Yeah, everybody in the room we can... Yeah, they, can you they can stick a fork into different rooms. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got it. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we got, James. Um, I'll put it all together and I'll email it over to everybody tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Okay, everybody wave goodbye to James. Bye, James. Bye. Bye. Over where all the block is. Okay. That All that duct work's in the walls, in, in the framing. And so these duct, either they abandoned them, or they weren't here, you know, I, I'm sure they're here, but all this ductwork is exposed on the top. Okay, yes. so you see, yeah, from all the so, common areas. So all the common areas. So, so even these. Yes. So you have a unit up on the, you have the unit on the side, there's a big pipe, pipe all the ductwork goes up on the roof, and then all that ducting is exposed on the roof, but they've coated it with foam, so it does have a little bit of an R value, so it's not, you know, sometimes that's a bad idea in the sense that you have a metal duct on a metal on a roof in summer. That duct's just as hot as the exterior air, and so it takes a long time for that ducting to get cold enough for the air to come out being colder. But the fact that they coated it with the foam kind of helps that. It does give you a little bit of insulation around that metal ductwork. Right so the AC on the roof controls the, this room? No, the AC on the ground controls common areas. The AC on the roof does your three bedroom. Got it. So you have one three-ton unit that does the living room, which kitchen, is, laundry room. Which is that one. That one. You have another three ton unit on the roof that does your three bedrooms. So you have six tons of air conditioning for 1,970 square feet. So you have enough air conditioning for about 2,500 square feet of house. Okay. okay? So that kind of compensates for the lack of an attic, you know, lack of insulation, block walls, you know, because there's no insulation in these exterior walls with them all being blocked. Right. Okay. And what's the maintenance like on, on those exterior ducts? That Really, in its current its current thing, really nothing. Okay. You know, um, as often as you would have a, you know, all foam roofs blister. Okay, so when they have foam, they kind of will, they'll kind of just blister. And so every two, three years at the most, I wouldn't let it go past three years. I'd have a roofer go up on the roof and see if there's any blisters that have split because they'll blister and then they'll split and then you have this exposed foam. And if it rains, it'll just act like a sponge and absorb that water and add weight to your roof. So every couple years, a roofer goes up there, and if there's any blisters, even before they split, they'll just shave them off and then recoat it with the foam and, and, and get rid of the blister. <laughs> yeah, so every couple years, when the roofer goes up there, you can have them look at the foam around all that ductwork at yeah. the same time and you know re reapply it if it needs to be. Were you up there? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, the first I'm thing I do. Right Good. Okay. Roof is solid. Okay. Yeah, I, I think a lot of stuff happens around 2013, 2014 in this house. 2014 tank that's water heater, 2013 you know, um, unit on the roof here. You've got a newer 200 amp panel and then the roof's kind of been recoded in foam. So I think a, a, something happened around that time money-wise. You know, someone put some money into the place How around that time. How old does this exist? 2013 is this unit. What about the what 20, 2002 on the roof. Oh, so it's older? Yeah. Oh, I see. Older. You have a drain that comes out, but what are they? It's missing. Uh, yeah. So, uh, did you see it down? It's missing the gray cover. Yeah. 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 It, it just says it's missing the. Let me see. Downspout. Yeah. Oh, that's what it's called. Yeah. It should have it, right? It's... You could have it either or. I mean, if not, if, if you have it, it's going to go attached to the house and then and then out. Yeah. The reason it's actually but probably yeah, here is to over... keep it so the water doesn't fall in front of the doors, yeah, but it falls over they don't here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I didn't okay. know that. I mean. Yeah. Should there be like drainage? Like, I don't see any drainage. Um, well, these houses are built on sand, so the earth absorbs a lot of the water on its own. Okay. You know, it has a pretty good water table in the sense that it'll absorb a lot of water. Yeah. And you just don't want negative fall towards the house. You know? Right. So as long as we got, you know, uh, rock, which acts as a little drainage as, in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't see any issue with that in terms of like, you know, a negative fall where you're going to have standing water up against the structure. Well, and considering we had so much rain this year, did you see anything that no, seems suspicious? No, I don't suspicious? see any evidence of any water penetration. Okay. You know. And there is a pest inspection, so they'll be looking for that as well. Okay. 
And then I noticed that on the other side of the house, um, portion of the house uh -huh. but that's just a vents because you don't have you got to have uh, uh, ventilation in your attic or else just moisture will just build up in I see I see so that's just a, a vent to the attic okay I looked at that too it seems significant but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could put something more over it like a, a screen or something of that nature if you were worried about things flying into yeah. it yeah well, I think it's uh, pretty further down in, like where it actually... Yeah, it kind of scoops in good. somehow. It's sort of yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, for the metal fences where you have corrosion, what do you recommend in terms of, uh, you know, future corrosion? Just well, I mean, you just have to treat it, you know. You yeah. can wire brush that and then put some, like, Rust-Oleum okay. on That's it, right. you know, okay. kind of just treat it, catch it as it happens. Like... Okay. But if it stays painted, then you know that'll protect it from rust. Well, so this paint it? No, I mean if you if you oh, painted that, paint it. Okay. like silver paint where you treat it. So like if you were to brush that, yeah, and then paint it silver to match everything else. Okay. Don't do the whole fence, but. Okay. And do you note in your report about missing panels in there, or is that not something you would? Well, I was thinking about putting that, but I didn't know if it was on purpose or not. Okay. Because I mean, I mean it was a patio roof. I just didn't know if it was on purpose or not. You know. Because the exposed beams there definitely take a hit you know, in terms of uh, weathered, you know, compared to the other ones underneath. But you're right, I, I don't... It yeah, I didn't know if it, was a, if it was on purpose or not. Okay. But in terms of the exposed beams, that wouldn't matter in terms of... Uh, but there, there's kind of roofs that don't have any covering on them. You know, they're just... You know, like maybe a piece for that. It could be, though, too, because sometimes the wind... Yeah. Yeah. I'll note that. <laughs> okay, so... Yep. Give us the story. What'd you find out? So we got two cleanouts. There's two four inch cleanouts out in the front. They're ABS. Uh, one goes towards the street, one up towards the house. So if there ever is an issue, it's an easy way to, to clear the lines. So, so ABS is the type of piping, and this is for the sewer line. And so he's saying there's two of them. And one will go from where you go into it out to the street if there's a backup in the sewer line. And then there's one that goes into the house. So if, you, if the backup were somewhere in the house, you would go. ABS is new plumbing, okay. so that's good. Okay, so yeah, because these, these older homes, it's always, they're still cast under the house and there's some clay out yeah. in the front, yeah. which is normal for these old houses. But I mean, everything, looked, I didn't see any roots. Okay. No, no offsetting of the pipes. I mean, there was one little area underneath here just holding a little bit of water, but it's not too much to worry about. Okay. So in other words, clean bill of health as far as the sewer line is concerned. As far as I can tell you, okay. it looks good. You know, a question came up for us. That, um, actually, you might know it. We're going to ask your expertise over here. Uh, outside, we couldn't find the water meter with the, the main water meter for the house. Buried. I looked for it, yeah, because he mentioned it. Okay, you think it's just buried? It's probably buried in the front. Okay. <laughs>